Hello everyone and welcome to the second part of the second lecture of the second week. So in the last video, that is in the first part of this lecture, we started talking about linear equations and system of linear equations and today this is a continuation of that video. So today we are going to try to look at linear equations or more appropriately systems of linear equations from a slightly different perspective. But before we get there, we're going to start our journey from something a little more basic. If you remember, when we were doing our matrix video and when we were talking about matrix multiplications, I did say that there is a completely unique and new way uh, in which you can look at a matrix multiplication. But I also say that we didn't know enough at that point to appreciate that way of thinking but I think after almost two weeks we are finally there and today we are going to look at that. So this is a matrix multiplication and if I just multiply it I know how to do it so this is going to be our multiplication right. Uh, this is for simplicity I have kept it as a 2 by 2 into 2 by 2 matrix and to make things general, instead of choosing numbers, I have just used variables. So A, B, C, D and P, Q, R, S can be literally anything, any real numbers. Now, actually, to help you better understand what I am about to show you, I'm going to make this even simpler. So temporarily, let's make this matrix multiplication a 2 by 2 into a 2 by 1 matrix multiplication. Now. I know what should go in the first place. I'm going to multiply the first row with the first column. There's only one column here. So multiply the first row with that column and I'll get A into P plus B into R. But instead of going element by element, if, I, if you look at the whole matrix at once, you can see that this is actually the first column of the yellow matrix, the matrix on the left. And that column, each element of this column is being multiplied with P, which happens to be the first element of this column. And similarly, you can see that this right here is the second column of the yellow matrix, a matrix on the left, which is being multiplied with the second element of this column. So we can actually rewrite this and we can rewrite this in this way that we are going to multiply the first column. The first column is essentially a vector, right? This is a two by one vector. So we are going to multiply this column P times and this column R times. And if I add them, the result is going to be the same result as this multiplication right here. Now, if this looks like a linear combination to you, that is because this is a linear combination and that's because we are taking something p times and taking some other thing r times and then we are adding them which is basically the definition of linear combination right a scalar into something plus a scalar into something so a matrix multiplication just what we saw here this matrix multiplication is a linear combination of the columns of the left matrix and the columns of the right matrix is going to determine how many times I'm going to take each columns of the left. For example, in here, P is telling me that I have to take the first column P times and R here is telling me that I have to take the second column R times. Now, let's expand this. Let's go back to our original 2 by 2 into 2 by 2 matrix. And this is still true. Again, the first column here is going to tell me all I need to know about the first column here. And the second column is going to tell me all about the second column of this resultant matrix. Because we can rewrite this just like we did a little while ago. We can rewrite this like this. And the first column of this matrix, this is the matrix. The matrix on the right is going to determine the linear combination. And I'm taking linear combination of the columns of this matrix. So the columns of this left matrix is AC and BD. So I have AC here, 
AC here and BD here and BD here. The columns of this matrix is going to tell me how many times I'm going to take each columns. For example, the first column is telling me take the first column of the left matrix P times and R is telling me take the second column R times. In here, Q is telling me take the first column Q times and S is telling me take the second column S times. This is going to be the first column of the resultant matrix. This is going to be the second column of the resultant matrix. So we can say that the columns of the right matrix, the green matrix here, they determine the scaling factor. The left matrix gives us the columns, the column AC and BD. And the right matrix gives us the scaling factor. How many times to take each columns of the left? And that is how we can think of any matrix multiplication as a linear combination of the columns of the left. Now, let's go back to where we started. Why should columns have all the fun, right? And why only we should choose the left matrix for taking linear combinations? What happens to the rows and what happens to the right matrix? Why shouldn't we choose them to take their linear combinations? Seems unfair? Well, apparently, you can do that too, because this can be rewritten as this. And as you can see, we are taking the linear combination of the rows, the two rows here, P and Q, and R and S. And as you can see, we have these rows here. For now, focus only on the first row here. As you may have noticed, the first row, the row P and Q, is being multiplied by the first element of this row. And the second row, R and S, is being multiplied by the second element of this row. Similarly, for row 2, the first row P and Q is being multiplied by the first element of this row. The second row, R and S, here, is being multiplied by the second element of this row. So what we just saw here is that we can also express matrix multiplication as a linear combination of the rows. The point to be noted is that if you take the linear combination of the rows, the rows are going to come from the right matrix. And if you want to express it as a linear combination of the columns, the columns are going to come from the left matrix. We saw the linear combination of the columns here. The columns came from the left matrix AC and BD. And we saw that the matrix multiplication is a linear combination of the columns of the left matrix. In that case, the columns of the right matrix determined how many times to take each columns of the left. We can also look at it from the row perspective. In this case, the matrix multiplication is a linear combination of the rows of the right matrix. We have the rows P and Q and R and S here. And in this case, the rows of the left matrix is determining the scaling factors. How many times to take each rows of this green matrix? For the first row of the resultant matrix, this row is telling me take P and Q A times and R and S B times. For the second matrix here, sorry, for the second row here, this row is telling me that take P and Q C times and R and S D times. Now, if I'm not wrong, this concept of matrix multiplication as a linear combination of rows or a linear combination of columns, this concept is completely new to you. If I'm not wrong, most of you never thought of multiplication from this perspective. So this is going to take a while to properly and completely comprehend. So what I want you to do now is pause this video right here and take a piece of paper and do a 2 by 2 into 2 by 2 matrix multiplication. All right, so that will help you to truly understand what is happening and how it is happening. I'm telling you to do a 2 by 2 into 2 by 2 matrix multiplication only because that's comparatively shorter and less complex. The, com the calculations are less complex and it will be easier to understand but this concept of matrix multiplication as a linear combination works for every single matrix multiplication. It doesn't depend on the dimension at all. For example, now we are going to see a higher dimension 
matrix multiplication. We have a 3 by 3 into 3 by 1 matrix multiplication and we want to look at this multiplication as a linear combination of columns. What this multiplication is telling me that I have to take the first column x times, I have to take the second column y times and again third column z times. But if you look at the left hand side, this is how we express a system of linear equations because this right here, this is 1x plus 2y plus 3z and that is the left hand side of a linear equation. Similarly, 2x plus y plus 4z is another linear equation. So this matrix multiplication here is just a matrix representation of a system of linear equation. And with that in mind, this new concept of matrix multiplication gives us a completely new visualization, a completely new picture of what a system of linear equation looks like. Let me show you what I mean. For simplicity, again, I'm taking a 2 by 2 into 2 by 1 multiplication. So this is a system of linear equation, right? The first row here gives me the first equation, which is minus x plus y is equal to 1. And that corresponds to this line plotted in this graph. The second row here gives me our second equation, which is x plus 2y is equal to 5. When plotted in a two-dimensional graph, it gives me this straight line right here. And the solution is the point of interception. This is what we call the row picture, because we are visualizing each rows as an equation. And the point of intersection is our solution of this system. But if we think of this matrix multiplication as a linear combination, we have a completely new picture. We have two columns which can correspond to two vectors here. The first vector is going to be minus 1, 1 and the second vector is going to be 1, 2. And what we are asking, the question has changed. We are not asking anymore where the two lines intersect. We are asking if we have two vectors minus 1 and 1, and 1 and 2, is there any linear combination so that I can reach to this point 1, 5? And the answer is yes. If I take the second vector 2 times, which means y is 2, and take the first vector 1 times, I can in fact reach there. So our solution is take the first vector 1 time and the second vector 2 times. So the solution is x equal to 1 and y equal to 2. That's a completely new way to look at it, a completely new visualization. And this is what we call the column picture. And this is very important in linear algebra because from now on, we're going to basically eliminate the row picture and almost always going to think from the column picture. So that is it for today. And in the next lecture, we're going to have a brief discussion on the solvability of a system. And if the system is in fact solvable, how many solutions we can expect to find from that system. Until then, take care and goodbye.